Good evening. I'm Rex Loy with New Song Church. Welcome to our Worship at Home. If this is your first time worshiping with us in this fashion, I would encourage you to pause the video for a few moments and to set up a, a worship center for yourself in your own home. Maybe have a uh, light a candle, maybe get out some bread and some wine or some bread and juice so that later on in the service, when it comes time to celebrate Holy Communion, you might join the rest of us by partaking of the bread and of the cup. So go ahead and pause the video that you might get prepared to worship God. And now as we prepare further to worship our Lord, I would ask that we all center ourselves, that we pause a few moments to reflect upon all that is good, all that is holy, all that God has presented to us. Spend a few moments, if you will, breathing in faith as you breathe out fear. Breathe in peace as you breathe out doubt. Breathe in understanding as you breathe out confusion. And now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I call us all to come and to worship God. Let us begin our worship with a word of prayer. Strange as it seems, O God, we ask that you protect our hearts. There's so much pulling on us right now. Stress from our own homes, jobs or lack thereof, decisions on who we see and interact with, and our polarized society on what is right and wrong in a pandemic. As we draw closer to you this evening, O oh God, allow our hearts to find refuge in you. Help us to understand and respect the myriad of concerns and actions that you lead people to take in a pandemic. And as we pray together, though not in person, remind us that although today is heavy with burdens, that you are still good. May we see and experience your care and concern, even when our circumstances seem difficult. Lord God, our world is broken. This is not a paradise like what you originally created. Sickness, death, pain and suffering have invaded all of our lives. Remind us, O oh God, that you are a God who weeps. Allow us, O oh God, the space to mourn all that grieves you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scriptural basis for my meditation this evening comes from basically from Luke's gospel. We hear that first. Pilate asked Jesus, are you king of the Jews? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But my kingdom is from another place. So you are a king, asked Pilate. Jesus answered, you say, that I am a king. And reading further in Luke's gospel, Herod was glad to see Jesus, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see some miracles. So he questioned Jesus at some length, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. But Jesus said nothing. And then words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Grow up. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. May God add his blessing 
to the reading of God's holy word. There is a story told apparently from years ago. A um, little girl lived on a farm. They raised corn, soybeans, had a few cows, a few chickens. But the little girl wanted a horse. Oh my, she wanted a horse. Family knew they couldn't afford one. Even though they had a barn, they couldn't afford to buy a horse for this little girl. But finally, somebody on the other side of the county found out that they were wanting a horse, and this old guy had an old plow horse that was pretty broken down, had about two feet already in the grave. And he offered to give that old broken down plow horse to the family, free of charge. And the parents had really no choice but to accept the horse. And the little girl loved that horse. I mean, she loved that horse. She'd, she'd spend most of the day grooming the horse and loving on the horse. And she'd put a saddle on and she'd take it for, not for rides, I guess you'd call it, but for walks um, around the pasture. One of the neighbors was trying to tease her about her horse because it was a pretty sad horse. And the neighbor asked her teasingly, he said, can that horse run fast? And apparently the little girl answered, well, no, sir, he can't run fast, but he can stand fast. He can stand fast. Scripture says that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. We were designed in such a way, you and I, that we have two basic responses to danger, fight or flight. And there is a time to run and escape, and there is a time to fight. But there is also a time to stand fast, to stand firm. Paul writes that we are called to be immovable in our faith and that we are to stand fast in our service to God. Jesus had times where he knew he had to stand fast in his faith. If you look at that last day or so of Jesus' life, he has just celebrated the Passover with the disciples. He's gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. While he's in the garden praying, Judas and the soldiers come to arrest Jesus. Now, Jesus could have escaped. He'd done that before. You may remember in his hometown, in the synagogue, the people got so upset with him that they decided they were going to kill him. But while they're talking about how they're going to kill Jesus, if they're going to take him out to a cliff and toss him off the cliff or whatever they're going to do, while they're talking about how they're going to kill Jesus, he just disappeared. Where'd he go? And there were other times when Jesus, when the crowds got so big that all of a sudden Jesus was just gone. So we know that if he had wanted to run, fight, Flight. If he had wanted to run, he could have. He could have escaped. But there wasn't a time to run. And also, he could have fought. You know, Peter, though, drew his sword and was going to protect Jesus. And Jesus rebuked Peter, trying to put that thing back. He then said to Peter and to the guards, he said, I could call upon the 12 legions of angels for my defense. You know what that means? That means that when the soldiers came toward Jesus, that in the kingdom of heaven, there were 144,000 angels that drew their swords and were ready to attack earth and save their Lord. But that's not what Jesus wanted. He could have fought, he could have run, but it was a time for him to stand fast. And then they take him to Pilate that night for a mockery of a trial. 
And Pilate's only real question to Jesus is, are you king of the Jews? And Jesus said at first, if you say I'm king of the Jews, I'm king of the Jews. Are you king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, you know, my kingdom is not of this place. He could have lied, could have escaped, stood fast. And so then they take Jesus to Herod. Now, Herod was glad to see Jesus because Herod had heard all kinds of stories about Jesus and about miracles that he performed. And so Herod thought, well, if Jesus is here, I'm going to see some fancy miracles or I'm going to see some magic. Herod was excited. Jesus wouldn't say a word. Silence of the land. Jesus would not say a word to Herod. Now, he could have fought Herod just with a few words. Remember when Jesus saw that fig tree and he cursed the fig tree and the fig tree withered and died? If a few words uttered from his lips could shrivel a fig tree, Imagine what those words could have done to King Herod. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus stood fast. I believe that we are all from time to time called to stand fast. And history remembers fondly those who have stood fast for their faith, for their faith in the way life should be, for their faith in what they believed. When Rosa Parks sat down on that bus seat, she may have sat down, but she was standing fast to her belief in equality. When Muhammad Ali refused to be inducted into the military service because of his faith in Allah, he was standing fast. When John McCain refused to buckle under the beatings and the starvation in the Hanoi Hilton during the Vietnam War, he was standing fast. We all have times when we are called to stand fast. I remember Mike Iaconelli telling about the time when his daughter had been diagnosed with leukemia. She had been through all kinds of tests and treatments. He said in his own heart, he felt like she had taken all the medication she could take and she just needed to rest. But he said every 15 to 20 minutes, in would walk the medical personnel all night long, checking her vitals, giving her medicines. And one night he said he finally decided enough was enough. And he literally stood guard outside her hospital room door all night long and refused to let anybody in the room because he wanted to make sure that his little girl could sleep through the night. And she did. There comes a time when we have to stand fast. Mothers out in Portland, Oregon, who formed a human chain linking their arms, standing between the protesters and the federal border agents, had chosen a time to stand fast. In recent months, a number of Justice Department and Intelligence Department bureaucrats who chose to resign rather than compromise their integrity decided to stand fast. The main thing that we have to do in deciding to stand fast is to make sure where we're standing. Jesus told this great story. 
He said there were two men that built homes. He said one man built his house on the sand and the other man, the wise man, built his house on the rocks. And Jesus said the storms came, the winds blew, the rain fell. And the house that was built on the sand came apart. But the house that was built on the rock still stood. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. As we move forward in life, let's make sure that we stand on our solid faith. And let's make sure that we don't run and hide and we don't fight when we don't have to. Let's make certain that we can stand fast. Stand fast. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I invite you to remember with me, if you will, the night in which he was betrayed. Remember how Jesus took the bread and how having blessed and broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of this. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord put his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen.